Welcome to our service for the first Sunday in Epiphany, Sunday the 10th of January. I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. May the Lord of glory be with you. Lord of all time and eternity, you opened the heavens and revealed yourself as Father in the baptism of your beloved Son. By the power of your Spirit, complete the heavenly work of our rebirth through the waters of the new creation, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Because God was merciful, he saved us through the renewing power of the Holy Spirit. But through sin we have fallen away from our baptism. Let us return to the Lord and renew our faith in his promises, confessing our sins in penitence. Lord Jesus, illuminate the darkness in our hearts. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, open our eyes to your saving love. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, unstop our ears to hear your living word. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the God of all healing and forgiveness draw you to himself and cleanse you from all your sins that we might behold the glory of his Son, the Word made flesh, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A Song of Salvation Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and will not be afraid. I will trust and be not be afraid. For the Lord God is my strength and my song and has become my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. On that day you will say, Give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name. I will trust and not be afraid. Make known his deeds among the nations. Proclaim that his name is exalted. I will trust and not be afraid. Sing praises to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. Let this be known in all the earth. I will trust and not be afraid. Shout and sing for joy, you that dwell in Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. I will trust and not be afraid. A reading from St Mark's Gospel. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. These last few days as we've been celebrating Epiphany, I have been remembering the baptism of our youngest, who was baptised at Epiphany several years ago. We have a lovely book of photos of the day. And today, as we 
come and observe the baptism of Christ, I think we are perhaps all called to consider Christ's baptism as well as our own baptism. Or if we are not baptised, perhaps to consider how we have arrived at the place we find ourselves at today. Our Gospel reading tells of how through the Holy Spirit, Jesus was baptised in the River Jordan and is affirmed as God's beloved Son. In our baptism, and indeed in our confirmation, we too are given the Spirit of God, which affirms us as God's adopted sons and daughters. But the first followers of Jesus hadn't really heard of the Holy Spirit. They had made the decision to repent of their sins and to change the way they lived. But they, hadn't not, but they had not realised that God's Spirit could actually live in them to make this change a reality. And there are still many people today who value Jesus' ethical teaching and use his guidelines as ideals to strive for, but have not taken on board as a real possibility that God's life can live in them, changing them from the inside out. We have to acknowledge that it is indeed a strange concept. All the time we're making decisions, what to spend our money on, which kind of car we should drive, whether to stop smoking or to carry on, whether to give money to a particular appeal. We also make decisions about the direction our lives take, whether to get married, whether to complete a tax return honestly, whether to cam campaign for justice or to become a vegan. All this reinforces that we are in control of our own lives as mature, independent people. The Holy Spirit can sound like a takeover bid and many will be suspicious of this and find it all rather far-fetched. Yes, we can choose to live God's way as rational human beings, but aren't we kidding ourselves to talk about God's life and spirit actually taking up residence? Is the thought of God's spirit dwelling in us a little frightening? Would we prefer God to keep his distance? Yet the Bible is full of evidence of the real living spirit of God at work. From the beginning of Genesis, where the spirit broods over the chaos and breathes God's creative life into it. To Jesus being baptised, God's Spirit settling on him, affirming his identity and his mission. To the early Christians of the Book of Acts, breaking into a whole new dimension of living faith as they are baptised with both water and the Holy Spirit. God breaks into our human confines with his divine nature and that opens up all kinds of possibilities, possibilities of full life which could never otherwise happen. He comes to us, he meets us in the wilderness, not to make a takeover bid, but to set us free. So this week, whether because of the lockdown, we are feeling all at sea, anxious, in the wilderness, or whether because of the lockdown we are able to find some quiet and some space to consider where we are at. Let us make time to pray for a new outpouring of God's Holy Spirit in our lives, till we are full to overflowing.
Let the Spirit of God in our hearts plead now for the church and for the world. Great God of all time and space, fill the church with such joy in believing that all Christians overflow with love, compassion, generosity and humility. Let us walk your way and live your life. May the Spirit of God fill us to overflowing. Great God of power and justice, fill the arenas of leadership and conflict with sharpened consciences and with courage so that wise decisions are made, needs met and wrongs righted. We bring before you our prayers for America as they transition from one leadership to another. And so too we bring before you our prayers for this country, for our government and all those who lead us. May the Spirit of God fill us to overflowing. Great God of gentleness and truth, fill every home with new insight and greater understanding. Break down the divisive barriers and build up our capacity to love one another. We pray at this time for all our homes, for those who are in lockdown together, for those who find themselves apart from those they love and suffering with loneliness. We pray for our NHS, all who are affected by the pandemic and all who are affected for other services where our resources are so stretched. May the Spirit of God fill us to overflowing. Great God of attentive caring, fill us with your practical compassion. May all who suffer be heard, comforted and cared for. Heal both their situation and our hardness of heart. May the Spirit of God fill us to overflowing. Great God of unending being, fill death with your life and the dying with hope in you. Prepare us all for life which lasts forever. May the Spirit of God fill us to overflowing. Great God of all creation, fill our mouths with praises, our hearts with gratitude for all the glory that surrounds us. And now, as our Saviour taught us, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May God, who in Christ gives us a spring of water, welling up to eternal life, perfect in you the image of his glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and all whom you love this day and evermore. Amen. <laughs>